there is perhaps no natural sound that more completely symbolizes the northern wilderness lake than the call of the loon. The sounds you are hearing were recorded at night on a remote lake in Maine. No doubt the loons were communicating something significant to each other when they gave these calls, but to us their meaning reflects our own emotions about the wilderness. The author John McPhee expressed some of these feelings after observing loons in the Allagash region of northern Maine. He wrote the following description of their behavior and calls. The loon is out there cruising in the spiraling morning mist, looking for fish, trolling. He trolls with his eyes. Water streams across his forehead as he moves along, and he holds his eyes just below the surface, watching the interior of the lake. He is gone. He saw something, and he is no doubt eating it now. When he dives, he just disappears. As a diver, there is nothing like him. Not even mergansers can dive like a loon. His wings close tight around his body, condensing everything, feathers, flesh, and he goes down like a powered stone, his big feet driving. He is known as the great northern diver. He is up again now, and he laughs. If he were human, it would be the laugh of the deeply insane. The bird's lower jaw opens and claps shut five times in each laugh. If from where you watch, he is swimming in silhouette, you can count the movements of the jaw. He can laugh two or three ways, and he can also squeal like a puppy. But it is with another sound, a long cry in the still of the night, that the loon authenticates the northern lake. The cry is made with a neck stretched forward, and it is a sound that seems to have come up a tube from an unimaginably deep source, hardly from a floating bird. It is a high, resonant, single, unvaried tone that fades at the end toward a lower register. It has caused panic because it has been mistaken for the cry of a wolf, but it is far too ghostly for that. It is detached from the earth. The Crees believed that it was the cry of a dead warrior, forbidden entry into heaven. The Chippewans heard it as an augury of death. Whatever it may portend, it is the predominant sound in this country. Every time the loon cry comes, it sketches its own surroundings, a remote lake under stars so bright they whiten clouds, a horizon jagged with spruce. Thoreau also wrote about loons. In the 1840s, they were calling on Walden Pond in Massachusetts. There are no loons there today. In most of the United States, their range has been pushed farther and farther north because of a variety of human disturbances. There is no reason for this to continue. It is very likely that loons and man can coexist if certain relatively simple precautions are taken. First of all, they are sensitive to nest disturbances, so the area around their nests should be avoided during their incubation period. This is usually in late May and June. Secondly, boats can be a problem. Although loons seem to get used to their presence on the lake, they should not be deliberately approached in a boat. This is especially true if they have chicks nearby. You can generally tell if you've gotten too close if you hear them give their tremolo or laugh. It means they are disturbed. The purpose of this record is to allow you to become familiar with the tremolo and the other sounds the loon is able to make. Their repertoire is relatively small when compared with some songbirds, so with a little practice, it is not difficult to distinguish their calls and variations when you hear them on a lake. We will begin by listening to the four distinctly different sounds that the loons give. They are referred to as the wail, tremolo, yodel, and hoot. First, the wail. Now, 
Now the tremolo. The yodel. And finally, the hoot. The first call in that series, the whale, has a very general message. It is given when a loon wants to interact in some way with another loon. It is heard, for example, when a parent is attempting to find a lost chick, or when one member of a pair is trying to locate its mate. The sound itself is a simple arrangement of pure tones. However, the loon can change the pitch of the tones to produce three variations or call types. The type 1 call is a single tone given at E flat in the octave above middle C. Here's a type 1 whale. The type 2 whale begins at the same pitch as the type 1, but then quickly jumps about three notes higher. The call then either ends at this point or drops back to the original pitch. The type 2 whale with the two different endings. The type 3 whale begins with the first two notes of the type 2 call and then adds a third note about three quarters of an octave higher in pitch. Here is a type 3 whale. In the field, then, you can distinguish the three call types by listening for the highest note in the call. Here's the type 1 call, the two versions of the type 2, and the type 3, played one after another. The next call is the familiar tremolo, or laugh. A loon will give this sound when it is frightened or disturbed, for example, when a boat comes too close, or when one loon is chased by another after intruding in its territory. The tremolo is also an arrangement of different tones, but unlike the whale, the notes rise and fall rapidly in pitch. This is an example of pitch modulation, which gives the sound its laugh-like quality. There are three tremolo variations or call types that are similar in a general way to the whale variations. The type 1 tremolo is a single modulated tone as follows. The type 2 tremolo begins at the same pitch as the type 1 call, but then jumps about a third of an octave. And finally, the type 3 tremolo goes a step higher. It takes somewhat more practice to distinguish the three tremolo variations because the pitch changes occur so rapidly. Birds, however, have a finer sense of time and so presumably have no difficulty in distinguishing the call types. We will now hear the three tremolo variations played at normal speed and then slowed down to one half speed to approximate the way the loon hears the temporal features of the call. First, normal speed. And now, one half speed. The tremolo is also given in the air. It is the only call the loon makes while flying. For a number of reasons, the tremolo is distorted when the loon is flying, so it sounds different from the normal call. We'll listen next to a series of tremolos given in the air. If you listen carefully, you can distinguish type 2 and type 3 calls.
The third call is the yodel, by far the most complex sound the loons make. It is an aggressive call that is given only by males. It is heard most frequently in the spring and early summer when the loons are establishing or attempting to maintain their territories. It is given, for example, during border confrontations between neighboring males, or when a resident male confronts an intruding loon. The yodel begins with a number of tones that gradually rise in pitch. The call then continues with a phrase that is repeated a number of times. It may help in distinguishing the different parts of this call to refer to the yodel spectrogram on the record jacket. Here then is the yodel, first at normal speed and then slowed to one half speed. The number of repeated phrases can be varied from one to more than nine. The next time you hear a yodel, count the number of repeat phrases. It will give some indication of how excited or angry the loon is. The greater the number, the more excited the bird. Here are two yodels, the first one with a single repeat phrase and the second with three. Besides communicating aggression, the yodel also contains information about the identity of the individual giving the call. In a small population, the yodel is a sort of name tag which a loon may use to identify neighboring males. Research also indicates that an individual's yodel does not change from one year to the next, so by recording yodels each spring, it may be possible to determine if the same males are returning. Listen now to the yodels of two different males that in this case have very different sounding calls. The fourth call in the loon repertoire is the hoot. It is a simple sound that loons use to maintain contact within family groups and when they are in small flocks. Here is a series of hoots from a single loon. Notice how the bird is able to change the pitch of the sound. We have now heard four distinctly different calls and their variations. Loons have the interesting ability, however, to combine two different calls to increase the range of information they can communicate. The loon seems to have rules for combining these sounds. Specifically, the tremolo can be combined with either the wail or the yodel, but the tremolo always precedes these calls. When calls are combined in this way, the loon is expressing conflict. In the tremolo whale combination, the bird would like to interact in some way with another loon, the message of the whale component, but is afraid for some reason, the tremolo message. The combination is often heard, for example, when a boat prevents a parent from reaching its chick. Here are two tremolo whale combined calls. When the combination is tremolo yodel, the conflict is one of fight, the message of the yodel component, versus flight, the tremolo message. You might hear this combination near a border between two territories. A lone aggressive male from one territory will suddenly find himself confronting both the male and female from the neighboring territory. The single male may continue to defend his border 
but will be somewhat intimidated by the opposing pair. Here is an example of the tremolo yodel combination. Finally, as a help in identifying loon calls in the field, we listen to each of the different calls and their variations. First, the whale. The tremolo, or laugh. The tremolo in flight. The yodel. The hoot. The combined tremolo wail. Finally, the combined tremolo yodel. <laughs> 